So Ashley, I am so excited to have you here today. I love um, when I get the chance to talk to female entrepreneurs. Your story is so cool and I'm really excited for the rest of the She Speaks community to hear it and to um, have you share with us some of you know what you've learned along the way. Uh, everyone who's just joining us, I'm Elisa Freud, um, and I'm the founder and CEO of She Speaks. I am super excited to have with me today Ashley Evans, who is the founder of Imbuz. And Ashley, we're going to talk all about what Imbuz is, but okay. can you just um, give everyone a little bit of an introduction on who you are? Yeah, so um, I'm in Michigan, and I've been a blogger for over 10 years now, so I, I have kind of that background, um, which kind of helped a little bit starting my own business. I kind of have some connections and everything that were helpful, you know, for support and networking. Um, and so I've, um, I'm in Grand Rapids, and I have four kids and two dogs, and it's, it's chaos around here. But I was like, hey, let's just throw a business on top of it. You know, might as well. Yeah. When, did, uh, when did you launch the business? Um, in October of 2018, so okay, just so, under two years. So still pretty new. Tell everybody what yeah. Imbuz is. Okay, so Imbuz is a line of cocktail infusion kits. And so um, you get a little pouch and it infuses two cups of, of alcohol um, and it's all dehydrated fruits and herbs. It's in a little tea bag. So you mm -hmm. just pop that in. Here, I can show you it real quick. But it's easier with the visual, I think. So this yeah. is all tequila. Yeah, so That's all tequila? Oh my God. Yes. So, so for anybody yeah. who is hearing this and not seeing what Ashley's doing, holding up, she's holding up a huge mason jar, which is how many cups yeah. is that? Um, this is two cups of tequila. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so two cups of tequila in a mason jar. And now what are you, you're going to, you're going to show us what to do. Yeah. You just pop the booze packet. All of them have the perfect amount of like fruits, veggies and herbs in there. And so you just pop it in the mason jar. Yeah. And the minute that it hits the alcohol, it starts hydrate and so all that flavor goes right into your alcohol so it's just fruits um four of them have sugar but there's only four grams of sugar for the entire infusion so mm -hmm. i mean it's really they're pretty healthy and um it takes about three days to infuse here so you you can watch it it'll start turning like pink this is the strawberry margarita so it'll be pink from the strawberries but it just smells amazing too mm -hmm. and so um and then once you infuse you have six months to drink it so it's not like you have to drink all of this in one sitting which is kind of nice um, and you can pair it with like Sprite or if you want to do Fresca. So you take the tea bag. Well, it looks like a tea bag. It's a, a large tea bag. You you stick it into the alcohol, whatever it is you're infusing. And then you have many different kinds, right? You can do it with uh, wine. You have like a, a kit. You have, so can you talk a little bit about the different types of versions you have? Yeah. So right now there's 14 available um, and there's three different margaritas. So there's the spicy and the strawberry and the classic. Um, those are pretty much pretty popular this time of year. Um, everybody likes the margaritas. And then, so those are for tequila. And then we also have two different um, sangrias. So you can do red or white sangria. The very berry sangria is the, the, the more summery sangria. And then there's the berry lavender lemonade. Um, which you can do for gin or you can do vodka or rum. So mm -hmm. some of them are more specific and then some of them are kind of, you can kind of do whatever you'd like, you know. Yeah. The blue orange is kind of the same way. If you like gin and tonics, it's great for gin, but also for vodka and soda and everything like that. And then we kind of switch it up again in the fall. There, there'll be more like apple pie and mulling spice and some fall flavors too. So it's kind of yeah. kind of rotate everything. Yeah. yeah, like a, like a spice sort of apple cider. That could be yummy. So it's a very cool product. Um, one that I, I know, you know, when I heard about it, I thought I have, you know, and I, I, you know, I like a glass of wine. I like a cocktails. And I thought, why has no one ever thought of this before? Because it is such a clever idea. Can you talk a little bit about how you came up with the idea? And I guess then, you know, how you sort of decided, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to launch this as a business. Yeah. Um, so I've always liked to make cocktails. That was kind of something even through college and everything. It was just kind of my thing. And so I've always been the one, you know, when we're at a party, I either bring my sangria or I'm making drinks and stuff like that. Um, so then when I was kind of, you know, blogging for so long, you just kind of get like a little bit burned out. And I was kind of trying to think of something new to do as kind of a little pivot. And so I kind of just started thinking, okay, what can I do that would be kind of food related still, but then kind of interesting, like different. And also kind of creative, too. I kind of wanted to have a, a different creative outlet. And so then I just kind of started thinking. And I mean, I've been infusing my alcohol for years, but I just didn't think it was anything special. I just kind of figured everybody kind of knew how to do it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was like, wait, no, not people really do it. And then I saw in restaurants, infusion started to become really popular. And so I had to kind of think of, okay, how can I make something that I could just have on the shelf that someone could pick up and just make their drinks at home? Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I, I did a series um, on like Instagram and Snapchat where it'd be like Saturday sips and I'd show people how to make drinks. And mm-hmm. even if I would show them, they still say, well, I don't want to have to buy this or I don't want to have to do this. They would just want it that simple for it to make their favorite drinks at home. And so I said, okay, well, people like Moscow mules. How can I make that so people can drink it at home easily? And so then with like the mule infusion, there's dried ginger and then um, the lime and pineapple. And so once you put it in the vodka, it tastes just like a mule, but there's not all the sugars and everything else. So I kind of also wanted a healthier route, but then also something simple too. Mm-hmm. You thought, well, I, I, you know, I've been doing this on my own. I thought everybody infused their alcohol. You realize they didn't. So you decided to launch this business. Um, I guess because you've been like a a blogger and influencer before, you probably had some business experience, right? Already in sort of running your your blog and and anything associated with that. But running a business like this is quite different um, than, than, you know, running the blog. So did you just kind of jump in and say like, I believe in this product, I'm just gonna go for it? Like, can you tell us a little bit about that? So I kind of had the idea in the spring of 2018. And so then I kind of spent the whole spring and summer experimenting. So I started learning how to dehydrate and learning how to do, cause I do everything. So I'm from the very beginning to shipping. Like I do every part of the business right now. Um, and so I had to figure out, okay, how can I make this work? You know, kind of, but I also, I was kind of hesitant at first for a minute. Cause I was like, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what if no one wants it? And then finally I just had to say, you know what? It's not gonna be perfect right away. I'm just gonna have to jump in there and do it. And so I, when I launched in October, I was like, I didn't even think about the holiday season. And so I launched my Etsy site and then people were buying that I didn't know. And I was like, wait, I just thought my family and friends would be buying right now. Like, who is this? You know, so it was mm-hmm. kind of something that just kind of caught on really quickly. And then the first holiday season, I was like, oh my gosh, I guess people really do like this. And so then as I went on into the next year, I kind of, you know, played around with different packaging and a, a little bit, you know, you kind of have to fine tune everything. But luckily, if I wouldn't have, jumped in right away, might, I might not have ever done it, you know? So you kind of have to just take the leap sometimes. Yeah. It's scary, for sure. Yeah, well, ignorance is bliss, right? And you have the passion for it and you sort of say, all right, well, I've got to give it a, you know, give it a go. And, you know, fast forward to where we are, I guess, to, to like March, let's say of 2020, and you had COVID happen. How, what were your thoughts about that? Were you worried that it would negatively impact your business? Oh yeah, for sure. And um, it was kind of funny because I had a show in Chicago um, in the very beginning of March and I was at the point, I was like, I didn't think it was going to happen. You know, it was kind of, it wasn't a huge show, but it was just kind of one of those like craft markets where people set up their booths and I was really surprised. And so um, once I got home from that, I kind of started thinking like, I think this, that was the last one. I kind of just knew that was probably going to be my last show for a while, especially like hearing all the news. The next week school was canceled and and so then as with school canceling, just everything started. My whole schedule just started to become blank. So I think overall I had like 32 shows canceled, which was, oh my like, God. you know, like the kind of January, February kind of slow. But then once March and April hit, that's just my show season all through the fall and wow. into Christmas. So yeah. I, as I think about being canceled, I kind of had to stop and think like, okay, now what do I do? You know? And so I kind of, I went to my Etsy page and Etsy and and booze.com they're both the same product but you know so just different aspects of it um so i changed all my tags so i'm like okay so people are probably going to be drinking at home what can i do to kind of when people are searching what can i do and so i you know i said boozy gifts or like gifts at home or drinking at home and just things that would kind of make if people are searching they would kind of say hey this is something fun and i'm home anyway might as well make good drinks because nobody's going to the bar anymore you know so i kind of had to think about it and kind of make it work yeah. But for a while, for a good three weeks, I was just kind of like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, like I was just kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. But I mean, everybody all just kind of, kind of had to just sit there and kind of figure out what was going on at first. And then I was able to kind of move forward with, okay, I can still do this. Um, and luckily, I'm in a commercial kitchen where I'm the only other one that runs there. So I could safely go there by myself, dehydrate everything, and then package everything. So it was a really good situation. Um, I think if I was anywhere else, it probably would have been, you know, probably couldn't have done what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Most people rent like like 40 or 50 different businesses are in there trying to work. So, so you changed the tag on Etsy and what happened? 
Um, so then businesses, which was something weird to me, like a lot of corporate accounts started messaging me like, Hey, we're doing a virtual event. Can you give us, you know, like all these margaritas for Cinco de Mayo? Or can you, we're doing a happy hour, like friends. I started mm-hmm. seeing all the gifts going back to all friends. Like someone would send 12 to all of our friends and they do their happy hour together. And so I just kind of saw all the connections through Zoom and everything else yeah. um, just happening through my orders. And it was just so, I love seeing all the messages like, hey, I know this really sucks right now, but here's a drink, you know, like, or cheers for your 21st birthday. Like just all the little notes that were going out were just, I knew that it was going to start snowballing a little bit, but I just didn't expect it to go insane. So it's just, it's been very crazy since like April. It's just been crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So Business Insider did an article that featured you um, and they talked about your growth. Basically, um, they were featuring you as a business that, you know, that during COVID, obviously so many businesses have slowed down in terms of growth while you have had this huge increase because, as you said, people are at home. They're doing I mean, I can't tell you how many people how often i'm getting um invited to doing zoom cocktails like you get on you know in an evening you get on with friends that you normally maybe would see in person out at a bar or out at a restaurant and you're on the phone uh, on a zoom call with them you know and everyone's kind of talking and i feel like we always spend the first 10 minutes talking about what are we drinking what are we each drinking so i mean this is such a great Like, you know, it makes so much sense that you had people who were interested and so smart that you went in and changed your tags so that people could more easily find you. Can you talk a little bit about like how you've been able to kind of grow and how, how, how that growth, you know, is kind of evolving for you? before I used to buy all my produce just at the store, you know, that's, I would just get my produce dehydrated, that kind of thing. But then not being able to go to the store kind of, you know, I would never know if they'd have oranges in stock or limes. So then I had to think, okay, where do other people get their produce? So then I found the wholesale produce company where I just back up my car, they put it in my car and then I leave, you know, and it saves so much money. So that kind of thing, like just being able to dehydrate more. Um, I bought another dehydrator. So I have two now. And then um, just learning how to package quickly. So kind of organizing everything and packaging quickly and just staying on top of the orders. Because um, just like one day my phone went crazy. I was like, oh, hey, there's a BuzzFeed article. They didn't warn me at all. But then all these people were ordering from, and obviously they saw it. And they're like, hey, where's the spicy margarita? So I have to like kind of make sure things stay in stock too. But also kind of have put realistic expectations for myself too. Like I am only one person. I have four kids. You know, like it's a lot to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of as I go, you know. So and your growth has been, I think you mentioned like your growth has been something like three thousand percent. You said some like crazy number um, that you've seen since this all started. I started looking and I was like, oh my gosh! Like because when I'm so busy, I don't stop to really look. I'm just go 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 all the time. And then I started looking at the numbers and analytics and everything. I was like, holy cow! Wow! So. I had to stop and pause at least to just embrace like this is really awesome that's happening and I'm so thankful, you know, because it's, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just yeah. taking a moment and then, of course, going back and having to fill all those orders. <laughs> um, so talk about yeah. a little bit, if you can, about, you know, there are setbacks, right, that happen in any business when you're trying to kind of manage and even manage, actually managing explosive growth can be a stumbling block, right? So talk a little bit about, um, you know, if you, you know, times that you feel like you've been, you've experienced some sort of failure or setback and how you really overcame that. Yeah, Um, especially during this time right now, it's kind of hard because I would love to have help, you know? So I was trying to figure out a way to safely have people come help me in the kitchen and that kind of thing, because it was just, I could only do so much and I could kind of feel the burnout coming. You know, I could, I was exhausted. You know, I was just, I could, I could work 24 hours a day if I had the time, you know, it was just, there was always something to do. And so I had to figure out ways to ask for help and to try to get help. Um, Luckily, like the last month I've been able to kind of safely get some people in the kitchen helping me while I'm slicing and everything. Um, But it's hard because, you know, everybody, it it is a crazy time right now still. And so um, it's just hard. I have to have um, realistic expectations for myself. I know that I can't do everything. And I also have to make sure that like everybody else, you know, like my kids are getting attention also. And it just, I can't just be working all the time. They can't just see me behind the computer or shipping stuff all the time. So it's just, it's hard to kind of let things go, but I have to, I have to get sleep too, you know? So it's one of those things that I just have to be 
be realistic. Um, I changed my shipping time. Um, when everything really started snowballing, I did a two week shipping window. Um, and some people were mad about that, but I, I'm making everything kind of to order. So it's not mm -hmm. like I can, I have inventory, but it's like always you know, being refilled. So people right. have to just realize we can't get it right when they want it sometimes. Right. And so there are, you know, I have gotten some messages like, where's my order? You ruined my mother's day because that didn't get there in time. I said, well, I can't ship it the next day. <laughs> you know, like, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> There's the window was there. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, just managing those expectations, managing, you know, your customer's expectations is, is very, it can be very challenging. But I think the point that you're raising, I've heard so many, I feel like I've heard so many female entrepreneurs tell me the same thing about, you know, they want to still have balance. Yes, they've, you know, you've started this business that obviously has taken off, right? That people really love the product. They want the product. But you also have your four kids, right? Uh, you have, you know, you have a family, and you have, you know, you need to make sure that they get your time and attention too. You know, just that balance is is really difficult. Can you talk a little bit about how you sort of learned to make the time to to be able to do both of the things? Like, what are some of the tips that you have for that? Yeah, I mean, I'm for sure still learning. Like even the other night. I my husband is like, okay, it's 10 o'clock. You need to be done, you know, cause there is always something to do, but I'm trying to, you know, have more business hours. And so it's so hard because, you know, I'm so accessible, you know, you can message me on Etsy, you can send me an email and I feel like I have to answer right away, but I really don't. I could have like those windows where I answer everything, but I just, in my mind, I just, I feel like I always have to answer things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's just, I've set up, you know, the, the messages, um, like the automatic responses, you know, so if someone, there's a lot of questions that come through that are all the same. So I can, you know, have the automatic responses, which takes some of the burden off of me and just, um, just really trying to take care of myself too. Like, you know, just even if I'm just sitting and watching like a Bravo show that I wanted to see, <laughs> like just having a glass of wine or booze and then just enjoying my, just for, even if it's 45 minutes, just having a minute to just zone out and just. Yeah. yeah. So giving yourself kind of being aware of what, rejuvenates you, whether that's, you know, being able to spend some time, quality time with your kids, watching a show that literally allows you to just decompress. And I, I totally understand, um, you know, what you're saying about, about, you know, even mindless stuff sometimes is the best stuff because yeah. it allows your brain to kind of say, okay, I'm going to disengage from the frantic pace that I'm running at. Um, yeah. you know, I'm, throughout most of my day. And I'm going to allow myself to just say, okay, I need to recharge here. So um, can you talk a little bit too about, you know, how your experience has been as a black female business owner, like how that has kind of come into play in terms of challenges um, or even, you know, how it's motivated you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So when, I, especially when the whole, the movement kind of is going through to support more black owned businesses, uh, Etsy started fe featuring my, sh my shop on there. And so I was getting a lot of messages and everything that people were trying to be more mindful about what they were purchasing. So I was really excited about that. I love that people are thinking a little bit more about it. Um, but also I kind of wanted everybody to make sure that they're not just like, okay, well I did that today. That's like a little checkbox, you know, mm -hmm. I want it to be something that's actually in mind. You know, like people always will think about this, you know, not just like, okay, well that week, that's what I did, you know? And so I've just really kind of tried to put emphasis on just making it a lasting kind of impression on people. So even if it's just like really, if people, if someone shares that they bought through Etsy and they wanted to, you know, they were supporting my business. I always make sure that I thank them and just kind of, you know, always have that connection too. So they can kind of get to know me and kind of see that I'm not just like, you know, I'm doing everything, you know? So it's like, I'm actually the actual maker. You have that connection with me kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and just learn a little bit more about my story too, you know? So I think that just connecting with the audience a little bit more has helped um, and just kind of show that it's not just, you know, a little window of time. It should be something that you're always thinking of. Yeah, but we want to leave some, um, a couple of minutes for questions. So if people do have questions, please feel, feel free to pop them in to the chat. Um, we will um, we will take some questions. But um, as people are doing that, um, can I ask, like, what do you have coming up next? Like, it sounds like, you know, you've built some great momentum. Um, yeah. You're like, you know, right product, right time, just so clever. What What's coming up next for you? 
Yeah, I'm um, really focusing on wholesaling. So I'm trying to get into more little boutiques and everything. And it's really the feedback that I've been getting the last month of just people that have put it in their stores. It's off the shelves immediately. So it's, it's really nice to see that it's going well in stores too, because I'm not ready for like a big box retailer, but I think the boutiques and everything are, and gift shops are perfect for this kind of product. And so kind of focusing on that kind of that and building relationships with different stores. Um, and then for the holiday season, I have like a little collaboration with Etsy coming up and just a lot of different things that are going to be exciting for the holiday season. So I have to kind of prepare though, because if it's this busy now, who knows what gifting season it's going to be like. So I have to kind of put the steps in place where I can kind of make sure I'm going to be okay. Because <laughs> it's going to be Absolutely. Crazy. And, you know, being able to kind of, I know that um, you've got some things going on too that will allow you to handle more volume, right? So that okay. it hopefully with, the holiday season, um, people are still going to be, you know, I kind of staying at home, not going out a lot. So such a great product for people to, you know, to be using during that time. So hopefully you'll be able to get lots of orders coming in and, and being yeah. able to handle that. So we have a question for you. Um, do you have any business, business mentors to answer your questions when you started out? Um, yes. So, well, at first I kind of still had the blogger mindset. So I was like, oh, I can just figure it all out on my own. And then I kind of found resources locally that would really help me because I, I had to kind of take off that whole blogger hat and be like, no, this is a business. It's a, which blogs are businesses also, but it's a different kind yeah. of, yeah. So um, there's a place called Grand Rapids Opportunities for Women. And so they have little classes that you can take and they just have, if you need to sit down and ask questions, they can help you. And so there's, there was just a three week or three month program that I took uh, that was called um, Cottage to Commercial. So when I first started, I was under cottage law so I could make it out of my home and then I went into commercial. And so that three month program just laid out everything for me. And that was just a lifesaver because I mean, I could ask some questions. They had all these different businesses coming in and explaining what we needed to do. And it was, it was amazing. So that was one of the best things. Yeah. So so you found that. And what was the name of that? It was an online. Um, it's um, it was in person. So it's called Grow, and it's just Grand Rapids Opportunities for Women. Yep. Um, a lot of the universities and colleges also have some sort of program like that too. So that which is fantastic. So you know, I guess the idea of people kind of tapping into those, like looking up and seeing if they can tap into those um, as resources. We have another question for you. Um, do you have any tips to manage work and home life better to get a healthier balance? It's always a question. Yeah. I know. I'm still really working with this. Like it's, it's, it's hard, especially because my kids. So I have a two year old and then an eight year old and 11 year old twins. So it's like, there's the range. They all need something different from me. And I'm just learning, you know, once the toddler goes to bed, I can have a little window of time. And then, but you know, I just have to kind of, do little pockets of time throughout the day. And so maybe not, don't try to get anything done at once. Maybe set a timer and be like, okay, let's do this for 30 minutes. And then I have to leave the computer or I have to walk away and then do something else with your family. So just, just, if you can find little pockets of time, I think that's the best route to go. And also just, you know, a family dinner is really important for us. We sit down around the table, we talk, even though we're not going anywhere, we still like talk about our days or what we're thinking about or anything or what we want to watch on TV, you know? So we still have, make sure that that's kind of an important thing that we do. Um, I feel like meals, we don't really, obviously don't go out to eat anyway, but we don't normally go out to eat much anyway. I usually cook something or my husband will cook. So I think that's important too, just having that connection at least once a day, just all together. Um, so you have another question here um, from uh, Dina. I am very curious about the sugar versus sugar free. Yes, that is a, probably the number one question that I get. Oh, and so when something says num or when it says like sugar free, if there's some other funky substitute, and so these are actually sugar free. So when I dehydrate everything, I don't put any coating on it or anything. It's just the citrus or the the ginger. So it's all just fruit that's dehydrated. And then if there are sugar cubes, it's just a little four gram sugar cube that I make. So like the old fashioned has a bitters infused sugar cube, um, but for four grams for the entire infusion, that's really not that bad. Um, especially when it's two cups of alcohol. So it's very minimal no matter what, but then um, the ones that say sugar free have absolutely no sugar. It's just the fruit. And it's since everything's dehydrated, it's almost like it concentrates the flavor. And so, I mean, even like this one, it's already starting to turn, you know, like Ooh, Yeah, that's the one that you did right when we started. So it's already yeah. using, wow. And so, so imagine that a few days from now. Yeah. 
Yeah, so this is the rum punch. I was actually going to make one of these in my little embossed mod mug. These are on the website too. And also, there's little mason jar lids, which are nice because then you can put what's in there. You can write a little dry erase marker. Uh -huh. um, it's just kind of nice to have those. You have another question. Um, are your infusions, do your infusions work also for non-alcoholic uh, drinks? Yes, that's question number two that's most popular. So you guys are like hitting them right there. I actually need to do a video about this because I, I, a lot of people that are pregnant or they want mocktails, they ask this a lot. Um, I always recommend like the ones that are vodka based because those kind of don't have the, because most of the margarita ones, you kind of need the tequila flavor. Um, mm -hmm. But any vodka based ones like the pineapple mule is really good or the berry lavender lemonade. Um, and I just fill up the mason jar like normal with water and then infuse it almost like a tea. But then uh, you still mix it with a mixer like to make your mocktail. And so it's nice because it feels a little bit special, but it's still, you know, different. You know, it's not just a tea bag. You know, it has a little extra flavor for it. And so awesome. for sure, you do the, the mocktail version. Yeah, that's great. Right. So you, you drink, you can drink them both as alcoholic, um, with you know, as an alcoholic beverage or as a non-alcoholic beverage. So that's great that people can kind of use it both ways. And, and yeah. then of course, you know, I wonder if kids also like the non-alcoholic version if kids, um, cause my kids love you. I mean, you know, you mentioned like the berry, was it a berry lemonade, some sort of yeah. something? Um, they're like, my kids would love something like that. So I feel yeah. like there are definitely versions that you could probably, you know, without alcohol, give to your kids too. My kids would love when I have the mocktail version because they're like, oh, we can actually have this one. They love the pineapple mule. That's one of their favorites for the mocktail. That, yeah. Um, I know we're, we have kind of run out of time, but, you know, thank you so much, Ashley. It's such a great, um, you know, chance for us to hear more about how you launched your business, how you thought about it, what the product is. So you feel like tidbits of advice that you had in there. So thank you so much for spending the time to talk to us and um, wish you the like best of success and can't wait to hear more about how it's going. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, Our and then there is a discount code too for 20%. Oh, okay. So it's just She Speaks. If you use that on imbooze.com, you could get 20% off. And so oh, awesome. everything's in stock right now. So, yeah. so if people go to want to buy something um, on Imbooze, if they go and you use at the at checkout, I guess, right? You use yeah. the code, um, she speaks all one word, then yeah. um, you get a 20% discount. All right. Well, I'm going to have to go order myself some, <laughs> but thank you so much. We appreciate it and hope um, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Bye.